Hello everybody, welcome back to my rebranded channel. This is the Centralized Day with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. Just for your information, we are as well working on restructuring this podcast because we would love to bring more traffic in here. So we are now making the podcast shorter. So we will today do the updates way faster than we usually did. So let's start with Bitcoin and S&P 500. Curtis, would you like to start? Yeah, so uh, the big news was Friday was the 8.6% inflation report, which was uh, all time high uh, this this year, um, 40 year high. And instantly uh, we're seeing crypto sell off. Uh, stocks are going to have a rough week. Um, so you're seeing Bitcoin as we speak hitting a low that's the lowest price in what a year and a half mm -hmm. a year yeah ever so since we're gone left. below the 25 we had 25k a little while ago but now we're at 24. Point so six. it's pushing pushing rapidly towards the 200 week moving average at around 23. I will, and I will it'll start. probably overshoot that so yeah um, we're getting really close there um so yeah, that's about it. Um, lots of news in the crypto. A lot of the alts are hitting around 90%. 95 down, even. 95 with some of them. Um, so crazy time. Celsius Network is not providing um, withdrawals, withdrawals mm -hmm. which is super scary morning. for them. Um, so yeah, really, it's going to be a really rocky week. Yeah, uh, yes, most likely. So uh, maybe two or three things from my side. So this is the circle. This I call it influencer circle, because the moment we dipped in in May, most of the Twitter, most of the influencers drew the cir circles either here or even higher, like 38k, and said that that's where we're gonna go next. What we did on our channel just after they drew this, like two podcasts ago, uh, we drew this circle and we drew this uh, this X in it that no, this is not happening. And right. uh, we can now safely say, because we are on lower lows, we can now safely say that, yes, this circle is actually not happening. Uh, as for the stocks, uh, I we used to have, again, another of my red circles, uh, we used to have it here. This was like made back in April. It was like uh, in mid-April, I think. And the circle had some kind of a reaction, but now I think we are really going to go down deeper. So I can now delete the circle. And as you mentioned, we are, we are going to talk about the, the, the inflation report and, you know, why it's bad news. But my next target for stocks is actually more bearish one. And that's this blue line. Uh, the 200 uh, moving average for stocks is also pretty interesting because it's somewhere there around these prices. So maybe 200 moving average for stocks for S&P 500 is going to work somewhat. So my next target would actually be somewhere around 3,400 uh, for S&P 500. And that's still like way, way lower than it is at the moment. And that's about it, I think. David, I thought what would be cool is to remember the, I think it was a log chart that had the Bitcoin low at 12,000. I think you and I, you had that chart in January and we we brief well you you brought up the idea that it is possible a 12k on uh -huh. that chart i remember yeah i think uh, that's interesting if you have i don't know if you have it on you but i'm gonna edit it in so i'm gonna cut it there right now this is taken from a very huge analyst hundreds hundreds of thousands of videos and so when the life was good he he brought up this and he was only talking about how high will this go only right. the only way where he was looking was the stops and 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 counting the money in his head already like okay this is where we're gonna get oh my god i'm gonna sell it but uh, uh, the when you if you really want to watch the big analysts then i do th or my personal opinion is that if you want to gain value from them you have to uh, see what they're overlooking because whatever they are looking at, there is hundreds of thousands of people looking at the same and it's not going to work. And what he was completely overlooking was whether we have bottomed yet. Because if you look at from the bottom part, you can see that the first quote unquote cycle, I don't think these cycles are cycles. I think there is no, 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 no time to make a cycle, by the way, but that's for another discussion. 
but there is a there was this boom and bust uh, things so the 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 bust the first bus was at yellow line, the second was at uh, this line, orange line, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But the yeah. next one never reached the blue line. It never right. reached the blue line. So where does the blue line stand today? Roughly 12K, by the way. Okay, so Curtis, would you like to start your presentation? I'm sure you have a lot to talk about. Okay, so um, let's go to my graph pie chart. This is the big connection with our last video. The last video did not have the May uh headline inflation print so it came in at 8.6 percent which is terrible for stocks and consequently terrible for crypto so we had the 8.5 in march 8.3 in april and the last discussion we had we were saying that it was kind of a coin toss whether we went higher or lower if we went lower it might have indicated that short-term inflation was had topped and the market would respond very positively to that um, because the Fed might have an excuse to not raise rates, in which case uh, stocks would rally, crypto would rally. In this case, on Friday, we got 8.6, which, as you, as you can see, we're going higher with inflation. And it pretty much puts a, a nail in the coffin that the Fed is going to have to raise rates further. And of course, that is the risk-free rate that makes stock PEs contract and risk-off environment. And so we've seen crypto fall. So 8.6% is really bad. So, so this week, I'd like to talk about the, the discussion of what if inflation continues to be strong, okay? And what is that going to do to global markets, okay? So if you mm -hmm. go to my pie chart, I'm going to set this up. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, quick numbers, estimates. This is global market cap of all assets in the world in trillions of US dollars. Okay. okay. So real estate, you can see, is 300 trillion US dollars. I've seen numbers of 350 or 360. I just brought it down to 300 just to keep it reasonable. Um, it could be higher, but let's just say it's about half of all global market cap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see bonds is next at $128 trillion. Okay. Next, you have equity at about a, equities at about $117 trillion. You have cash and bank deposits at $40 trillion. That's the green. You then next, the little pink sliver is art and collectibles, $2 trillion. Gold is $12 trillion. Silver, mm -hmm. $1.2 trillion. And you have Bitcoin at $0.6 trillion. As of today, that's down to more like uh, 0 0.5 trillion okay so the total number is 600 trillion of this chart you can see bitcoin i'd like to just talk about bitcoin rather than crypto we can have a separate discussion about okay. bitcoin versus other alts but well it's heavily to correlated simple. today so yeah it's still the king yeah. bitcoin is still the king today so. yeah and so we're looking at bitcoin versus all of these other assets in the context of inflation rising uh basically my thesis or my little sort of uh value add is that is the question uh, what happens to these other assets with inflation permanently higher or rising consistently um and that um you know the thesis would be that some of these other assets would spill into bitcoin okay and so i've got about 30 minutes here to kind of make that case that um higher inflation is going to damage the brand or the let's just say the inv investor sentiment of these very large buckets, real estate, 300 trillion, bonds, 128 trillion, to a lesser extent, equities, but cash, of course, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that all of these buckets are so much bigger that it's actually a bull case for Bitcoin to get some of the spillover from all of this. Uh, once we've kind of bottomed here and gotten over the fear in the bounce back that uh, these other assets are going to be damaged. Okay, so if you go to my Excel sheet, it'll sort of drill down on this. Where will the money go? No, yeah, where will the money go? So we're going to the top. Okay, so I know there's a lot of information here. Um, we'll put this in the, people can look at this. Um, we can share this, David, later to everyone. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. but basically uh, I've broken down these asset classes again. We're looking at real estate, bonds, equities, cash, gold, art and collectibles, silver and Bitcoin. At the bottom, you can see it's a total of 600 trillion. Okay. 
you can see that real estate is 50% of that 600 trillion. Uh, bonds are 21%, equities are about 20%, cash 6%, gold 2%. Now, when you get into art and collectibles, it's 2 trillion. That's only 0.3 of 1% of that. Silver's a tiny portion of that at 0.02%. And then Bitcoin is the very bottom. It's 0.01% yeah. of global <laughs> assets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you then go to the right and you look at uh, a yield estimates for real estate and cap gains. Um, these are kind of rough numbers, but you can see, um, you know, real estate might give you a 5% yield in some countries, 5% cap gain. It's illiquid mm -hmm. bonds, bonds like the 10 year yield is US treasuries 3%. Um, stocks give you a 10%. But on the far right, you'll see the summaries of that yield after headline inflation and then after real inflation. And you'll see how how uh, negative it gets very quickly, right? Um, yeah. When we're talking about the headline inflation averaging 5%, of course, we just printed 8.6%. Yeah. But let's say, you know, it's going to go up and down, let's say 5%. Um, when I'm referring to real yield after real inflation, the very far right, we're, uh, -huh. uh, you know, the headline inflation does not include real estate, like home ownership, luxury cars, the cost of a four year university degree, imported goods, etc. So what you'd call, um, premium or luxury goods are even rising even faster. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at properties like downtown property in San Francisco or Vancouver or Sydney, or you're looking at, um, premium, um, waterfront, uh, real estate, um, you know, going to a major university, all of that is much more than 5% a year and much more than 8%. So, so the far right column is just showing that if we do have that persistent inflation, none of these buckets of, of assets are producing a positive yield, right? Mm -hmm. um, real estate is just barely keeping up. Bonds are negative. Equities, you know, some tech stocks outperformed. Right, Tesla outperformed. Um, some of Apple outperformed Amazon. If you don't include this year, right? Um, so very few growth stocks even outperformed the the real yield after the real inflation rate is considered. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, look at the bottom. Bitcoin is the only one of those, in, in my opinion, that's outperformed. Um, so, so what does this mean? What I'm trying to say here is that with a persistent high inflation rate, people are going to look at bonds and real estate and say, wait a second, why would I hold my money, the new money I have, why would I be putting that into real estate when everything's in a bubble, right? And everything is going to be either going down or underperform. Um, so th that's just the argument is, where do you put your money to protect against inflation when everything's in a bubble? I have an argument to say as well. Yeah, please go ahead. So uh, my argument would be that the bit, well, crypto in general is the only alternative to the not only financial system, but also to the governance system is the only alternative that humanity has. And obviously the financial system is failing and it's dying and it's it, it's going to have to collapse. And so what is the alternative? Well, if if you don't want to account for total anarchy all around the world, then the only alternative is crypto. So that would be my argument why I also agree that it is, this is going to decouple. Today we are, we have always been very coupled and correlated. I think Katie Wood is wrong when she says that we haven't been. We have very strongly. I can we have a look we can have a look at that. But uh, I think that is going to change at some point of time. Yeah, it's going to be decoupling. So not only do I agree with that, that thesis that over the let's say there's a, a bit of a there's a risk of, of sort of a, a very, um, very rapid extreme change. Mm -hmm. But also even in a very conservative, if you're looking at a very conservative hedge fund or um, someone managing a lot of money that's just being very pragmatic like a larger mm -hmm. fund that may not have a catastrophic view, 
like for example they may be pro bonds pro real estate balanced portfolio but even that person through a very conservative lens is going to say wait a second it just doesn't make sense to buy bonds at three percent when we've got headline inflation at eight and real inflation at 10 to 15 to 20 percent so but the thing is where do you go right where does the dollar go so yes i agree with you there's an extreme scenario but even in a conservative scenario there is nowhere to go with your money yeah and this is the so, only alternative i think as well right and that's why it was created that's why satoshi spoke about that's why he chose 2008 as the time yeah. when he came with his first alpha version of bitcoin yeah so um and then you say well it used to be gold and silver but look at gold so if you look at the far right i've made some comments gold was 18 dollars 1800 dollars us in 2011 and it's 1851 today okay silver was 20 dollars in 1980 and it's only 23 dollars today mm -hmm. okay now there's a different purchasing power but uh in any case, they really have not filled that gap. So gold bugs have been talking about fiat breaking down for a long time. And their argument would be that gold and silver fill this gap, but they haven't, okay? With the exception, like I said, there's a gold Japanese yen chart we could maybe put in later, but um, gold in Japanese yen terms is spiking. Uh, but even that considered, um, you don't really have anywhere to go. Now, the US dollar was a place people would go, right? People would go to US treasuries because they would say, well, at least there's some price stability or purchasing stability with the US dollars. But aha, what's happening now? You have an 8.6% headline inflation rate, yeah. which is saying in the US for domestic owners of the US dollar, the US dollar is failing. It's the last uh underpinning of this system and it, it is also devaluing you know you can talk about the egyptian pound or the venezuelan uh was the bolivar or the uh you know other currencies uh inflating away but if you have the us dollar also doing that where do you go right so this is uh there's an extreme way of looking at this but even in a very modest conservative way of looking at this you still have to answer the question where does your money go in the next six months 12 months 18 months okay so below this i've got other questions you know that people are, are welcome to read through you know um what happens to real estate if if we peak and the bubble starts collapsing I don't want to own real estate just for the rentals because the rental income doesn't even cover my mortgage. So why would I have a rental? Why would I put up with difficult renters? You know, uh, bonds, 10 years for at 3%, that doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> Obviously, cash and bank, like cash, money, fiat is not performing. Um, mm -hmm. Art and collectibles don't have a cash flow. Gold and silver don't have a cash flow. So where do you go? Yeah, I also, I agree with this. There's okay, so let's go to the next. We've got some conclusions on the next page. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I could talk for, um, just go up to the top, just scroll up a bit. Mm -hmm. So where will the money go is the question. Um, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin is only 0.01% of global assets. Um, these asset, class, asset classes have failed to keep up with inflation, except for a few exceptions, like tech stocks or like a Tesla or um, some, some rare exceptions. Um, sorry, there's a few spelling mistakes in here. Um, as inflation rises further, even prime real estate and top performing tech stocks will start to fail, right? Um, now, one of the thing is that bonds are falling at the same time that equities are falling, right? So mm -hmm. in a traditional 60-40 portfolio, you would have 60% stocks and 40% bonds. And if equities fell, your bonds would balance that and vice versa. This is failing. We have both falling at the same time. This is very new territory. Um, why would you own bonds if they're not going to diversify and protect your portfolio? Right. And bonds are one hundred and twenty eight trillion dollars globally. Yeah. 
Okay. So if you go down to E, some basic math, okay? So people are seeing today, we've got Bitcoin at 24,000. You hear the bears saying Bitcoin's not going over 100,000. I think it's nonsense that it's not going up again based on this argument. It's going well over $100,000. On what time frame? We don't know. And why? Okay, well, let's look at, let's look at real estate. Um, at 300, that's a typo, it says 326. So real estate at 300 trillion, 1% of that is 3 trillion. Bonds at 128 trillion, 1% of that is 1.2 trillion. So all I'm arguing is that 1% of these buckets spill over into Bitcoin, just as, as just a, a really small reaction from the market. That still takes us to a 5 trillion Bitcoin market cap. With mm -hmm. 19 million Bitcoin, that's a, a value of 263,000 US dollars per coin. Okay. Okay, I have, a, I have an argument here. Yeah. Um, so my argument is that this money uh, that we talked about, that I think, yes, the only option, the only alternative that makes sense is crypto in general. Although as for Bitcoin, uh, I mean, I don't want to say that Bitcoin is compromised and I don't, I don't want to look it I don't want to make it look like the other cryptocurrencies or the new upcoming projects that are not compromised yes like like every project has its problem like Bitcoin's problem for instance is lighting is heavily centralized Mellor's family owning like around 2000 nodes you don't hear this information anywhere nobody's talking about it but every influencer says it's decentralized and everybody claps at that no like true lighting is very centralized but I'm not don't want to say that other cryptocurrencies don't have their problems but uh, technologically uh, obviously bitcoin is lagging behind that would be my argument why i'm not sure 100k is uh, definitely i wouldn't say it's certainty because uh, in, uh, the, the decoupling the between alts and, and bitcoin or within the crypto space the decoupling of cryptos from one another is going to have to happen at some point we don't know right. when and the so, money yeah. will go to crypto, but not necessarily to Bitcoin. Yeah. So we could, I think it's a long, we could have a debate on this yeah. later. Um, there's just not enough market cap. I mean, even Bitcoin is too small of a market cap to absorb these large funds no. coming in. It right? will go into so, a bucket of crypto, not one. It will into, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, I mean, and so it doesn't have to be either or. Let's just say a few trillion dollars spills over. I think Bitcoin would take a large share but of that. But we'll capture in, definitely right? part of it, yes. Uh, gold, we're looking at 6 trillion, 19 million Bitcoin. That's uh, uh, 315,000. And then um, if bonds came, like if you had a, a Bitcoin bond issued that was a guaranteed, you guarantee the Bitcoin and you offer 2 or 3%, you would still see a massive market share go to that. I think if you had a major bank or a government offer Bitcoin bonds, um, you could have a spillover from bonds. A 7 trillion market cap would be 368,000 US dollars. These are very conservative sort of guesses at what could happen. Um, okay. So another discussion would be Bitcoin versus the altcoins, and we can have that separately, I think. That would also be a long discussion. Yeah, but maybe the next time. Um, so this is just an argument very, you know, very basically that there's going to be a, a damage to the brand of bonds, real mm -hmm. estate, um, uh, that's sort of market wide and yeah. even small amounts of spillover are very bullish for crypto. So there's an article here on bonds. Uh -huh. Um, basically this chart here is showing, look at the losses. So oh, okay. wow. look at 2022. So basically bonds are losing as, as, as as stocks and everything else is everything's selling off right and that's because of inflation right uh which fits the argument um you know what do you do to protect against inflation what do you do and anyone that can answer that is free to uh um tweet me uh, follow me on twitter <laughs> or write a comment uh under the video but i think that yeah it's very hard to come up with anything else that done crypto but that, that's we that's why we created it in the first place right and that's why right, we continue right. working on it and uh, that's why we believe in it right Obviously, and it's interesting because that. um i've done i've done these what are they called the, the twitter chats where everyone's talking at the same time what's it called space twitter space or okay. mm -hmm. it's basically 
I did one with Mark the Messel, and then yeah. um, and the same. We we're talking uh, about this issue, and then Tone Vays. I know some of your guys know Tone Vays, don't, but he's a, a trader. The same issue came up uh, with him: is what do we do, right? What do we do? So I think this is a pivotal moment. Um, I think it's good for crypto for Bitcoin. We've just agreed that there is going to be decoupling between crypto and the stocks at some point of time, that it is inevitable, in my opinion. And you've just agreed to that. And yeah. after that, that's going to be the first decoupling. And after that, I think a similar kind of decoupling will happen inside of the crypto. Not Maybe not between every crypto and other crypto, but maybe between the kinds of crypto. Like there is going to be... Like for instance, layer one platforms will gonna have their own kind of cycle and you know charts, and then we're gonna have DeFi maybe that's gonna have their own you know cycles and charts. Then we're gonna have meme coins, <laughs> and yeah, you know, DeFi. This kind of a decoupling is gonna happen within the crypto space, I think, in time as well. Right. Gonna be the next. So step. yeah, we mentioned that Celsius Network is now not letting people withdraw their coins. So we could be having. We're in the middle of maybe a second failure. But that's not a, that's not DeFi. That's CeFi, a centralized finance. Before we have like five more minutes, so I would just like to say that the one thing that is keeping me awake at night that I also told you the last time on our podcast, and we finally see initiative funding. Oh my God! But I think it's too late. Uh, one thing is the amount, the, the extreme amount of leverage comparing to the market cap. There is just too much leverage on the market comparing to the market cap. And it's just the the, the over, -leveraging, over leveraging index, as I call it, is at 2.23. It's like extreme of an extreme. I think it's the extremest high we've ever seen. Okay. And what is it? Is it long or short? That's the problem. Uh, I think, well... There has not been that much shorting over the past month. There was some shorting in mid-May, but then ever since 20th of May, like people were just longing, like for two more weeks, they were adding to the long leverage. So majority so, is the long leverage for sure. There is some short leverage from this, but the majority is long. Okay. So why is this keeping you up at night? Because we haven't flushed it. Because this but is what what's happened. the worst that could happen? Uh, liquidation cascade down. And then and what happened. happens? Okay. So Bitcoin gets really cheap. That's okay. great. Yeah, but then what happens? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but then we would have like fifty percent from today. Like liquidation cascade would be very, you know, rapid cascade. Yeah. You know, down prices. But are you concerned that this would? So to me, that's just cheap Bitcoin. Everybody it, who has leverage yeah. today, they're gambling. I had a very uh, uh, spicy discussion with Marx Demesel the last week because he has some leverage. It's it's unthinkable to me, like. He's been, you know, he's been always so proud on his CAGR and all his performance over the past 10 years. How yeah. can someone like that do something so gambly? Such, so he is gamble ballsy, I'll tell you. My favorite thing about Mark is that he is confident and he is aggressive and he sticks to his guns. But I agree with you that, well, this especially once you get to a certain level of wealth. I don't know about you, but this is um, there's a... There's a saying that you only need to get rich once. And the meaning is, you know, if you're smart, once you get there, you shouldn't have to go back and, and start from zero again. Yeah. If we go to 12K, I'm buying that. And uh, it's only going to 12K. I've been waiting for people... so long. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Nobody's... I mean, I don't know about you, but I've built up some cash. And uh, I've, I'm, sh I'm sh short in the sense that I'm in stable coins with some of the money that will be reallocated to Bitcoin, right? So as we speak, I'm, I'm building up more and more Bitcoin. So with that, it's time to wrap this up. This was very interesting. Lots of happening and lots of talk about. Um, let's see what pops up in the next few weeks. Yeah, we, I mean, we could talk about uh, Bitcoin versus altcoins in terms of longer term winners or something else interesting that comes along. We don't know what's going to hit us in the upcoming two weeks. Well, this week's going to be crazy, I think. It I mean, already we, is. Literally, we've got, what, three, three hours until the US stocks open. It's going to be down. The whole question is, does something break, right? In other words, is there some hedge fund that's way over leveraged that just says, we can't, you know, like uh, a, 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 a large entity says we can't pay what we owe right mm -hmm. um you know so if something like that happens we're getting into much more serious territory shy of that i don't think this is bad as bad as 2008 um yeah. you know play defense and be patient and 
Let's see you in two weeks.